Hey everyone, Spencer from 45 Drives with another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, today we'll be talking about Nextcloud. So, what is Nextcloud? Uh, Nextcloud is basically uh, like a competitor, I want to say, of something like Google Doc. It's a, a cloud-based platform that is for collaborative file editing. Um, so today, we're going to just cover the install process for that, and as well as some use case things for what you can actually use Nextcloud for. Uh, so we'll get started with that install I talked about. So like installing pretty much anything else in Linux, uh, we're just going to make sure that all our dependencies are kind of in a row. So we'll make sure we're all updated and that we have all the packages we need. Um, the main things we'll be installing are the actual Docker uh, packages first. So that's things like uh, Docker CLI, um, Containered, that sort of stuff. So we'll get all those installed now. And those are pretty sizable packages, so this will take a little bit. But we'll just skip ahead of that so you don't need to sit here with me and awkwardly wait while things install. So once all of our Docker dependencies are installed, we'll go ahead and install Docker Compose, which is what we'll be using for the actual Nextcloud deployment. Um, and that's just a matter of curling down that package and then making it executable. And we can confirm that we have successfully installed Docker and Docker Compose um, by just checking the version number. Um, so we can see it returns with 1.29.2, uh, which is what we're going to be using throughout pretty much all of our Docker deploys. Um, so to actually get into the Nextcloud part of things, we'll just make a directory that we can keep all of our Nextcloud files in. And we'll go ahead and pull down two scripts from our scripts repo. Uh, we're going to be pulling down the Nextcloud Compose YAML file and also the Docker file for that YAML file. Um, so we'll grab both of those just from our scripts repo. And once they're installed, all we have to do now is actually rename that nextcloud-compose.yaml file to docker-compose.yaml, which is the actual format that Docker Compose is meant to use. So we'll go ahead and rename that right quick. And with that renamed, all we have to do now is start up those containers um, with just up dash D with that command. And once that all starts, we'll wait for Nextcloud, uh, Mariah DB, Nginx Proxy Manager, and another DB to install, which again takes quite a while because those are all fairly large packages. So we'll just speed through this Docker Compose startup. So we're back, and it looks like our Docker Compose file has finished. Um, and we can see here that it is now creating the actual containers that we'll be using. So once all of those are finished, we can check their status just to make sure they're up and running uh, with Docker Compose PS. So when that's issued, we'll see the readout of all of our containers, their status, what ports they're listening to, all the things you would need to see in order to actually use these containers. Um, and with that, we're going to hop into the actual configuration of Nextcloud. All right, so for our Nextcloud deployment, we have started using Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, which is a UI-based uh, proxy manager for Linux um, that's using Nginx, as the name would imply. Um, so all we ne really need to do here is provide the IP address of our server that we're going to be using, the container, in this case, nextcloud-app, and then whatever port we need it to use. Uh, since we're not doing any type of certificate here, that's just normal port 80. And then as we can see here, we now have access to our Nextcloud UI that's just on the base IP address of our server. So one of the main uses for Nextcloud is storage. Uh, if you want to get storage to particularly people like remote employees, um, you need some way to do that over the internet. And Nextcloud provides a, a friendly UI to do that. Um, so you can see that we have access to a UI here where we can do things like create folders, create files, um, any number of thing that can be done through Nextcloud. Again, think of it just like a, a replacement for Google Docs that you have more control over. Um, of course, you can see here that we can edit files as well. In this case, it's just a text file. Um, so Nextcloud can be used for collaborative editing. <laughs> there we go. I can type. Um, so another cool thing with Nextcloud is that in 45 drives, we, of course, have these really dense NAS devices. Um, so being able to use the storage in those NAS devices on something like Nextcloud is really useful. Uh, a way we can accomplish this is through an app called uh, External Storage, which basically allows you to input things like SMB shares and export them out through Nextcloud. So we'll get that started here. You can see this is the external storage app. So we'll call one SMB share just for the point of it. We'll give it the host address. In this case, it's just going to be our server. But this could also be a remote address if we needed it. 
Then, of course, we need to supply the typical information for an SMB share. The actual host name, the username, in this case, it's just going to be my name, and then the password. Once we do that, we can see we now have access to that SMB store, but in a cloud environment, in an environment where someone who's working from home could then go to this IP address and access your SMB storage. And of course, he can also then create whatever documents he may need to use in this SMB environment. So like we talked about, Nextcloud is primarily used for collaboration. But as you can see here, when I try to open this .docs file, uh, it just downloads. That's not particularly useful if we want to be able to edit this file on Nextcloud. And that's because Nextcloud's built-in uh, document editor doesn't actually support Windows' docs format. Uh, in order to do something like that, we'll need to install what's called OnlyOffice. Um, so we'll go through that install really quick here. Um, again, I'll speed this up so you don't need to watch the install process. But basically, it boils down to creating a Postgres database, installing uh, the OnlyOffice docs server, giving that docs server a port number, and then forwarding that port off into Nextcloud. So we'll skip through this install really quick for you. Right there should be good. All right, so OnlyOffice has now been installed. So all we really need to do in order to actually use OnlyOffice um, in Nextcloud is go into our apps again. There's a ton of apps in Nextcloud, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to keep in the only office realm for now. Um, but if you ever want to go crazy down the rabbit hole of Nextcloud, there's an app store with like hundreds of apps um, for all kinds of different uses. But for us, we're just going to use this app called OnlyOffice. Uh, once we enable that and then go into its config, um, we can see that by default, OnlyOffice has actually picked up that there's an OnlyOffice server running on the server environment at port 9200. Um, I've disabled certificate uh, verification, sorry, um, just because I don't actually have a certificate for this specific use. Um, but now, as we can see, we open up this doc, and it opens up in what is essentially an Office 365 suite. Um, so we have all the typical things you would expect um, when it comes to like inserting graphs, inserting tables, your layouts, your references, collaboration. And of course, this is also like a live editing platform. So multiple users can be editing on this doc at the same time. Um, and that's pretty much that. All right, so as we've seen, Nextcloud is a really useful platform for, especially in today's day and age where we're working a lot more remotely and we need collaborative tools. Um, it's a great way to get documents out to people and to edit them collaboratively with your group, be it whatever use case you may have. So as normal, uh, the full guide for what I just did here will be in the description. And you can go and check that out if you want to get Nextcloud set up on your own or contact someone in our support team to get Nextcloud installed on your server for you. Um, with that being said, this is pretty much it for this week. Uh, see you guys next time.